in day wo kedu ki mere adima hello thanks for joining me i was asking you how you're doing and i was responding by saying i am fine in the igbo language of southeast nigeria thanks for joining me as we're going to complete the lesson on shapes shapes is called od in igbo of course this is my ancestral tongue so i put great effort into learning it and Hopefully, I'm going to be able to uh, go to Igbo land in the near future. Of course, I've had two visits to Nigeria, but it was in a Kwaibom state, a great, wonderful place called Uyo uh, in also southeast um, Nigeria. Also, that whole region, I'm understanding from my research, was once called Biafra. You know, you hear about from the slave trade, it'd be called the Baida Biafra. But from what I'm understanding in my learning, uh, understanding the Igbo language, culture, and history, that it also was its own kingdom at one time that spanned a, a great amount of um, land there in uh, Igbo land. So it's my hope to visit the five traditional states there as well as other places where the Igbo people now reside within Nigeria. So again, I'm proud of my Igbo ancestry and uh, if you're a native speaking Igbo person, feel free to correct me. I've been doing this a uh, little less than a year and a half now and learning uh, the language. But we'll go ahead, just 10 quick um, words in Igbo to complete the series on shapes. Uh, so again, shapes is called OD. OD is shapes in Igbo. And again, I'd like to show my picture just because you can't see me on the screen as we go forward in the lesson. So uh, you know who's speaking to you. And we'll just go ahead and uh, go on with the lesson from here. It's me coming back from um, Uyo, Akwaibom State, Nigeria back in 2019. And of course, I always bring back uh, some clothing with me. And that's one of the uh, cloths I brought back that was made for me by a, a, a tailor there in Uyo. <clears throat> All right, let's scroll down to where we were. And thank you for being faithful to these lessons. It's a good moral support for you to join me as well. And again, as most of you know and have been following my lessons here, that um, I'm also a historian in African history, and um, Black Americans are highly uh, descended from the Igbos. In Nigeria in general, uh, we're very high when it comes to, down to all the modern DNA analysis that's being put together from the millions of black Americans that have taken DNA tests that um, the main tribes we come from are the Igbo Nigerians, uh, the Yoruba Nigerians, the uh, Fula, also known as the Fulanis, and also the Ibibio. And so we're highly Nigerian. Probably the other one that is very high in us outside of Nigeria would be the tribes out of Angola, um, being the Mbundu and the Bakongo people. So we're very, very high in those regions. If you're a Black American and your family's been here for the centuries since the slave trade, you're very, very high in your lineage coming from the Igbo people, Nigeria in general, and especially Congo and Angola. Uh, but nonetheless, we'll move on for the uh, 10 uh, quick words. And again, all we're talking about today is verbs. Again, they're under the subheading of shapes, uh, OD, again, out of uh, the Igbo language. Uh, from my book, Igbo 101, I highly recommend that book as well. If you're able to get your hands on it, you're trying to learn here from the United States, uh, it'll help you quite a bit. Um, but to get going, uh, the first word is the word for to understand. And notice when I do it in the translation in English, I put to in front. That's to let you know that we're talking about a verb. The other way that you know that you're talking about a verb is that the word is going to start with either an I in English or an I with a dot underneath. Remember the letters that have the dot underneath are called diacritics in uh, Igbo, and it gives the uh, letter a different pronunciation. Remember the Igbo alphabet does have all the English letters pr pretty much for the most part. It's missing a few uh, from English, but it also has some additional letters that English does not have. Uh, for instance, that GH you see there, that's one letter, not two, one letter. 
in Ebo and it gives you a Y type sound, okay? And you'll see what I'm saying as we go along. So the I with the dot underneath gives you that real sharp I sound as if you're saying ink, ink, ink. And the O with the dot underneath, again, that's a diacritic. Uh, so it gives a different pronunciation to what you see. It's like the all sound in auto. So what you'll be saying in order to say to understand something, you're saying uh, iyata, iyata is to understand. So again, iyata, just three syllables, means to understand in Evo. So don't get intimidated by that if you're just joining me for the first time. Uh, some things in Evo are easier to say than English, and some things are harder to say in English. It just depends on the word itself. So Iyata is to understand in Igbo. All right, to feel as if you're you're filling a bucket with water or you're filling a shape with color, something like that. Again, you're talking about a verb because again, you see the I diacritic letter in the front. And remember, GB is actually one letter in Igbo. Now, again, I'm using the English pronunciation of the alphabet, but, you know, we want to get really technical about it. Uh, the Igbo letters have their own name. I'm just keeping it simple by using the English pronunciations. And that GB sound, that is a very special sound that is not made in English. And I, I struggle making it, and I think 99.9% .9 of people that have English as a first language like me will struggle with trying to pronounce that GB character. So most native speaking Igbos, uh, when they tutor you on this and teach you the language for the first time, they'll just say, make a B sound with it. You know, don't worry about the, the technical way of saying it. Um, just go ahead and make a B out of that and they'll understand you. So with that being said, to feel, uh, the verb to feel would be Ibaju. 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 To feel. All right. To guess. All right. Like you're trying to figure out something. You're guessing what the solution may be. Now, again, in Igbo, it's just like the uh, U.S. English, you will have contractions. So when you put two words together to make one word, you eliminate a character, just like we do with the word do not. In English, we make it don't. So we start eliminating some of the characters. Igbo does the same exact thing. So what it looks like, you would say, um, if you're going to be speaking extremely proper with it, it would be ikota ihe. But again, those are the two words, and that's the way you say it in a proper sense. But the average person is not going to say it that way. They're going to make a contraction out of that word. And what you do is you eliminate the A and pronounce the rest of it. So keep in mind, you got special characters that have a different pronunciation than English. The I diacritic, again, is that sharp I sound like ink, ink. That O with the dot underneath makes an all sound like auto. And then also E's in Igbo make an A sound, okay? So you put it all together, it would be Ikotihe. Ikotihe is how you would say it. So Ikotihe is how you would say to guess. Ikotihe, to guess. All right, to measure. Now, this one's a little bit easier than the last one because you don't have to make a contraction out of it. You just pronounce it the way you see it. So again, your special pronunciation is the I. The I makes an E sound in Igbo. The U with the dot underneath makes an O sound. And the O with the dot underneath makes an O sound like auto. So to measure something, um, you would say, E.G. Toa. E.G. Toa. To measure. So e.g. toa to measure. Now what you just said literally in English is e.g. basically means two, literally two. And then toa means measure. So you literally said to measure. You just said it the Igbo way. So it's e.g. toa to measure. All right, to multiply something. Um, the only thing special that you want to uh, look out for is when you see a letter that's doubled. When you see a letter that's doubled, like the two A's in this word, you would just elongate. In other words, you would stretch it out when you say it. That's all it means. 
So to say multiply is mu ba, mu ba to multiply. So mu and ba is how you say multiply. Mu ba to multiply. All right, to subtract. Again, you the giveaway on this is the I diacritic character. And that tells you you're talking about a verb. And of course, the E makes an A sound. Okay, so that's the two things you look out for. So to subtract something, to take away, it would be iwe pu. Again, iwe pu to subtract. Again, iwe pu to subtract. All right, to take. Now, this is one of those that you have two words that you do make a contraction out of. And so you're going to eliminate that second E in the first word. So if you're going to say it really proper, which most people are not going to say, it would be Iwere Ihe, but you're not going to pronounce it that way. Uh, you would pronounce it uh, as a fowler. Remember, you're going to drop that second E, and that, that E makes an A sound, remember? And the two I's with the dots underneath makes that sharp E sound like uh, ink, ink. So you would say Iwe, excuse me. Iwe rihe. Iwe rihe is to take. So, Iwe rihe to take. All right, to tell the time. If someone asks what time is it, they're asking you to tell the time. So, they may say to you, Iku oge. Iku oge to tell the time. Now, Iku. Um, means to say, literally means to speak words. Equal means to say something. And you're going to describe what you're saying, oge, which means time. So you basically just said, say the time. Okay, in English, we just say it simply to tell the time. It means the same thing. To say, to say, to say the time and to tell the time means the same thing. So again, you would say, equal oge, to tell the time. And again, your special characters, the I diacritic, that high I sound like ink ink and the a E sound would make that I mean the E would make that A sound so equal oge to tell the time again equal oge to tell the time all right only two more left I believe if I'm not mistaken to verify uh, something you know to check if it's correct uh, to verify again you got the special characters the I diacritic that uh, high I sound like ink the U with the dot underneath, which makes that O sound, but you have a regular U that just makes an O sound. So you got to watch out for that on this word. So uh, what you would be saying is Icho puta to verify. Icho puta to verify. So again, it's Icho puta to verify. Okay. So don't let those two different types of U's throw you off. Icho puta. To verify. All right, last one is to watch something. Again, it's a verb because you have that I diacritic letter, sharp I sound, and the E's make that A sound. So it's ilele to watch. Ilele to watch. All right, so you've completed uh, the module on learning shapes and the verbs associated to shapes. So we'll start something new on another occasion. And again, I want to bid you the uh, Igbo way. That is, as we end, Imela, which means thank you. You can also say Daolo, which means thank you. And good night is Kachifo. All right, Kachifo, have a good night. Thanks for joining. Bye-bye.